Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Magic Kingdom. We're back. Yes. Well, you're back. Yes. <laughs> I'm here for the first time in a very long time. Yeah, it feels like it's been forever, but um, we're back here today to wander around, chat with you about a few things, and try some of the treats that release with the opening of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. We will not be riding Tiana's Bayou Adventure today oh. because we were unable to get a virtual queue. Legitimately unable. Yeah. To even have an option to get a virtual queue. It was weird this morning, like, you know, we do the virtual queue all the time for various attractions, but this morning, it wasn't even like it was quick where the virtual queue filled up, but it was more along no. the lines of like, as soon as the clock turned seven, they said that there were none available. So, yeah. I don't know what that was about, but I did hear that Disney was having some trouble with their virtual queue over the past couple days. So maybe it has something to do with that. Maybe my fingers just weren't fast today. I disagree with that. I think something went wrong. Usually you at least get like a like a slowdown in the loading or something. You didn't even get that. You just no. went from one screen to another and you didn't even have a shot. Or did they lessen the virtual queue size to like almost nothing because they can't get through a tenth of what they expected to get through? It's a good question. We'll talk a little bit more about it today, but um, for now, I think we should get moving. Yeah, let's get going. Let's go check it out. All right, let's I go. haven't been over there. I, I know. Go see it all. And oh, <laughs> when we made our way in, we popped into the Emporium real quick because I wanted to show Russ some of the merch, yeah. thinking that it might still be there. It's not. Now, the day that we're visiting is like day three of the attraction being open. So what I'm thinking is that they've moved the merch over to the Critter Co-op. So I do want to make my way over there today mm -hmm. and take a look and see if that's where the merch is. Yeah, let's see what we got going on. And we'll take a closer look. Hopefully it won't be super crowded in there. So I can give you a better look at the merch than we got on opening day. It was wild that day. So, okay, with that, let's get out of here. Let's do it. Now our first order of business today is actually gonna be to check out the food that is available at Golden Oak Outpost. This is where the food was on opening day. I don't know if it's gonna be there today. Of course, it's a few days after opening, so chances are it may have changed. Either way, we'll tell you about it. Check this out. This is now open as well. Looks like they just have some water, maybe some almonds. It's always nice to see these areas open back up. I talk all the time about areas that close and people forget about them. That was one of them and it didn't really open up in the same way that it used to be. Like it's not quite the same as it used to be, but it is open and that's good. All right, so our first order of business is to make our way over here and check the menu. As you can see, they're still set up for a lot of people. So I'm, I'm sure it'll be a popular booth to stop at today. Now we just took a quick look at the menu. They have beignets, hot honey chicken with sweet potatoes and gumbo. Is anything standing out to you? Unfortunately it always. I gotta test it all. I gotta, I wanna, I, I gotta test the gumbo against Port Orleans, let's be honest. I mean, it's in, in the park gumbo versus a festival gumbo versus a hotel gumbo. I think I have to get the gumbo. I mean, the chicken looks like a, the regular tenders, which are delicious, with hot honey on them, so I'm sure those are delicious. I kind of want the chicken. I guess I gotta pony up. Get both. Get both. And beignets. Beignets maybe later. Maybe beignets on the way out. Yeah, definitely but not. But at right. least the two entrees, like for the time being. All right, Deal. so that's the plan. We're not gonna get it right now though. Like it's, it's breakfast time. Perfect time for gumbo. <laughs> See, see, that's the problem. See, she doesn't want to pull the trigger. She talks a big game. I don't just talk a big game, sir. <laughs> I play a big game, okay? Anyway, we'll come up with our plan and then- uh, chicken for breakfast. Why not? Um, and then we'll come back and get some food. But first, I figure we go check the Critter Co-op. Yeah, the, the line's not getting, getting crazy or anything right now, so I'm not really worried about it. So yeah. let's go take a look at that first. I mean, how many people want gumbo for breakfast? Some. I was gonna say, at least me. At least some. All right, so our next order of business is to make our way over to Critter Co-op. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know if it's gonna be open. I checked the app and it said that it will open after Tiana's opens and people are coming out, so. So we're going in. Let's do it. <laughs> now Critter Co-op is of course the gift shop. 
for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Welcome in. Hi, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is where we're going to find our merchandise. Super cute. I like the license plate. Yeah, adds the extra flavor. Um, this is where we're going to find most of the merchandise that we saw the other day. Plus, of course, there's some details that we have to keep an eye out for in here. It's super cute. Okay, let's take a quick look at some of the merch that we didn't see. So we already saw that on opening day, but they also have this cook set, which I think is so adorable. And they have the this jumpsuit. jumpsuit. <laughs> the jumpsuit is adorable. I'd wear this jumpsuit. I'm just gonna say. It's got a little detail so right cute. there. It is $44.99. Sadly, not in adult sizes. That is too bad. They also have a little backpack over here, which is really cute. And then all of the plushies. We took a quick look at these the other day. Now I saw someone comment on this online. Check it out. It actually has Briar Rabbit on the log. Seems like they didn't update that, but the logs don't have Briar Rabbit on it. I wonder how long that'll stick around. $12.99 for that. Then we have the fireflies. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys, I know you might have seen this in our video, but I bought one of these. Look how cute and they're interactive. They're $32. So cute. And they come with a little jar. Aren't they adorable? Oh, they've got I have one at home, and um, I need your help naming him, or her. Help me out. Got some clothes for the kiddos. And then this water bottle, which is pretty hefty, and it does light up, but it's not obviously lighting up right now. It's got all those characters from the attraction on it. This one is $16.99. Got some t-shirts up here and some hats. We saw those the other day. We had a sipper. Oh, check this out. I didn't notice this last time we were here. It's a Magic Band Plus. That's pretty cool, $44.99. It's cute. I wonder what the pattern is or if it makes a special noise when you boop in. That'd be kind of cool. Little jazz number when you when you boop in. That would be fun. Of course, we have the spirit jersey here, which we saw the other day. $84.99 for the spirit jersey. I know you're not gonna believe it, so I'm gonna show you the tag. $84.99, it glows in the dark. That's a price hike from what we normally see for the spirit jerseys. It is a little bit more done up. Yeah. But again, it's that same material that's gonna break down. Really. Yeah. Yep. Not a fan, but definitely more expensive. Be aware of that. This bag, though. It's really cute, isn't it? I love how detailed they made it. I know. It and does. I love that it has the attraction on it. It's, it does look good. It is. It, I don't know why, but I, I just, it looks like it's on fire. I know it's not. No, but it does glow at night. Does it glow at night? It's a glow yeah. in the dark? No, 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 no. Like the attraction. Oh, the attraction does? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see what else we can find. Of course, we have to take a look. Oh, I can't believe I haven't looked up until now. Lots of detail in here, super cute. And of course, for those of you who remember this gift shop when it was open for Splash Mountain, it looks very similar. Really? Let's take a look. Oh, there's a few other things over here. I didn't see these the other day. Wow, these are heavy. It's, heavy. So it's, it's a teapot and a teacup. That's pretty cool. $34.99. And we have a pillow here as well. Yeah, pillow is $34.99. I like the pattern. That's really pretty. Very pretty. So we've got some more stuff over here, including this frame. What do you think about this frame, Russ? Because I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it, but now I can't not see the rare rabbit log. And it's right there on this too. Crazy. Is that a nod? To the old attraction? I think it has to be. Interesting. I want to see what this is though. Let's see. Is this, it's just a little. Is that a dry bag? Pouch? Is this supposed to be a dry bag? I don't know. $19.99. It's a tech case. What is a tech case? Uh, it looks like a basic. No. Oh, it must be a little dry bag. Um, Feels like barely. it. Barely. But I sometimes would... these are pretty effective. Yeah. It'll That's get you my cool. So you can put your electronics in there when you're on a ride. Now in the second part of the shop, we have some cooking stuff. So here we have some spices. 
There's some information about who we're talking about here. $9.99 for this fried chicken seasoning. Let's see what else we have here. We have a gumbo base. There's also a seafood seasoning here as well. And there are some cookbooks, which is pretty cool, so that you can cook and do it in style with all of these things themed to Tiana's foods. Now, what's this? A recipe binder. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, 50 cards, 25 clear protective pages, six recipe category dividers, and Tiana's inspired venue recipe itself. That's cool. So that one is $29.99. Then we have some oven mitts here for $19.99. And an apron, you guys know how much I love the aprons. Isn't that so cute? $39.99 for the apron. And we keep going because we have this, what is it, a stand of some sort. Oh, it actually kind of turns. Could you use this for spices? Maybe that's what this is, a spice rack. It feels a little flimsy, that one. No, it doesn't turn. Okay, that one's just flimsy. $54.99. Of course, I'm sure you could be creative with what you use that for. We have a coffee mug over here as well. That's cute. And that one is $19.99. And check this out. Hot sauce. There's also a Bananas Foster chocolate bar, which I would like to get, but... It's a little hot out for that right now. Yeah, it wouldn't smell. No. Not really. All right, so we have some other treats here. We kind of saw these the other day. We've got some lollipops, some popcorn, and check this out. Like Cajun Crunch? Ooh. That sounds really good, actually. That does sound really good. How much is it? Um, oh, hold on. It's probably up here. $5.99 for that bag. All right, we were just about to leave, and then we saw this little corner. We have to take a closer look. So, first of all, look at the record player. It is so cute, the way that they kind of assembled that, using all these different things. Then we have the trumpet. Got some records down here. This is cute. That's great. I really like that. My mom would love that shirt. <laughs> All right, what did you think of the Critter Co-op? I think they did a pretty good job with the new overlay. I agree. Considering it's an overlay, and that's what it is, I think they did a really good job with it. It's very cute. It's very inviting. Uh, they have a lot of nods to the ride. Uh, clearly, some Br'er Rabbit is still, still among us. Yeah? Which, I mean, I'm not complaining about, but I think it's funny. No, it's really interesting. Um, but that's a that's a conversation for another day. Mm. I think it's really cute. I like that they have a shop where you can get the merchandise. It's well themed and it still feels like the old shop, which again, this entire attraction wasn't a complete ground up rebuild or reimagining. It was just an overlay or a, you know, change of theme, however you want to describe it. Mm -hmm. Words are funny whenever we talk about these things recently, but that too is a discussion for another day. I liked it though. The merch is really cute. I do think that they have some fun stuff. Again, I would have loved to see something that was more like, yay, opening season in that shop, but unfortunately, no. Yeah, I think uh, the merch definitely was really nice. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cute. I like the patterns. A um, few things I think they could have done a little bit differently with some of the merch. No, I really like the ears. Like yeah. the emerald green ears were really cute, but I think that for whatever reason, they like, just didn't go green enough. I just think it's just a little off, but I get what they were trying to go for. But I'm also very drawn to the photo frame. The frame is really cute, and I feel great. like we haven't seen a frame like that here at Walt Disney World in a really long time. So the fact that you can get your ride photo, have it printed out, which I think you might be able to actually do here. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that you can do that, get it printed out and put it in one of those frames. That's one of my favorite things about Disney or you know theme parks, especially for an attraction that you really, really love. So I'm happy that that has returned and I hope we see more of that moving forward. Yeah, I, I really like that. Um, so sad we didn't get a chance to ride it yet. I know. I really want to see the ride. I'm very excited too. And uh, that is what it is. That being said, though, we are keeping track of the virtual queues right now. It's uh, about 9.50, and they're still on groups 1 through 22. Yeah, it's moving really slow. Very slow. I don't um, think this ride is meant to have a virtual queue. No, but I want to talk a little bit more about that later. Okay. Like, later today, but it's a little toasty in this spot. So let's um, 
let's move on. It's fine to me, see. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. All right, we pulled off in Pecos Bills. It's uh, nice and cool in here, and we've been spending so much time in here every time we're here at Magic Kingdom, so I figured, why not come on in here, cool off for a little bit. Russ ducked out to go get some gumbo because he wants to spread out these dishes throughout the day, which is a good plan. So, you know, who's gonna question the stomach? Anyway, while he's out there, I figured I could chat with you about some of my thoughts when it comes to virtual queue for Tiana's Bio Adventure. Because look, a lot of people have had mixed feelings on this. They've been sharing how disappointed they are that Tiana's Bio Adventure opened with a virtual queue. And I understand that. This is one of those things that I too have some mixed feelings on because I understand why Disney probably went with a virtual queue, but I understand why people are upset that there is one. Since Tiana's Bio Adventure took place of Splash Mountain, and Splash Mountain functioned well for however long it was open. I don't see why it was necessary to put a virtual queue in place. Oh, and by the way, when I say functioned well, I mean the queue process. It's not a learning curve to get people on this attraction. And there's no learning curve with Tiana's Bio Adventure either. Certainly not like there might be if we were talking about Tron Lake Cycle Run, a completely new attraction at the Walt Disney World Resort. I understand why there are people who are upset that there is a virtual queue. Um, virtual queues can be a little bit difficult to get your hands on. Like I mentioned, we didn't get one for today. Virtual queues can also be kind of unpredictable, so you don't necessarily know when you're going to get called back and then you only have an hour to return back, so there's that. But I also think that virtual queues can be nice for a few reasons as well. First and foremost, because it gives you the ability to kind of get in an extremely long line without having to wait in that extremely long line. For example, when we were here on opening day, we had waited about four hours for our group to be called, which means that if we would have gotten in that line, assuming that everyone who got in that line only got in that line once, that would have been a pretty hefty line. So I would rather wait for four hours elsewhere in the park than wait for four hours in a line in a queue. But again, that's just my personal preference. I also think that with the virtual queue, it limits the number of times that people can ride. So it's a lot easier to get more people through as opposed to people getting in line over and over and over again, making it a longer wait for someone who just wants to get on once, you know? So like, it's a give take, there's a lot going on. Um, I am distracted by a wafting scent that just made it in here. And no, it's not just that it's hot and humid outside, it's that Russ has returned with the gumbo and it smells amazing. So, come on over, Russ. It does not look amazing. Okay, admittedly, this does not look amazing. It actually looks kinda gross and kinda watery, but, um, there's nothing here. All right, so we dug into this dish, and unfortunately, thanks to some technical difficulties, you aren't gonna see it. Um, but we can reenact. You ready? Grab your, grab your fork. Oh, ready? yep, yep, yep. Mm. Disappointing. And that about sums up the review. So um, long and short of it being this dish definitely is more reminiscent of like a poutine that's New Orleans style yeah. than it is a gumbo. So it's served with sweet potato fries. The sweet potato fries are good. They're delicious. It's served with this gumbo, which really just feels like gravy. It doesn't really, um, I don't know, it doesn't feel like gumbo at all. It really There's does no feel more like a gravy. I wouldn't say that there's no flavor. There is some flavor there, but certainly not like what you'd expect if you wanted a bowl of gumbo. We do have some sausage in here. It's supposed to be shrimp. Shrimp and sausage. There's no shrimp. No shrimp at all. Um, we dug through this whole thing. Didn't see one little shrimpy in there, but it does kind of have a taste as though there is shrimp. You know what I mean? Like it has like a like a seafood-like taste. Ross sure. even mentioned that it kind of reminded you of clam chowder. That's it, it, con consistency-wise and taste-wise. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this was like $12.99? $12.77. $12.77. So I don't know that this wasn't worth it. I do think that it was a decent portion. You got some sausage in there with the gravy and with everything else. Uh, do I think that this was worth it if what you wanted was gumbo? Absolutely not. This no. did not hit the mark. Not at all. Which is super disappointing for a few reasons. Number one, 
they have gumbo recipes that are really good here at the Walt Disney World Resort. Yeah, Port Orleans has a really good one. The Food and Wine Fest one is also very good. Also very different, but very good in its yeah, own right. Which They're I both actually good. find is interesting because like, okay, so fine, maybe you don't have a kitchen available to you to make the one that is available at Port Orleans, but that, that cancels out by the fact that they do have it at a like stand mm -hmm. for food and wine. So there's no excuse. Really no excuse. I also think it's really disappointing because Tiana's is like all based on food. And since this character, Tiana, is based on a real person, mm -hmm. I feel like serving something up like this is like just like come on, you could have done better. Well, so and this is the thing that actually comes to mind is, do I not know what good gumbo is? Do I not know what true gumbo is? Is this true gumbo versus what's actually at the hotel or the food and wine fest booth? Even if I don't, there was no flavor here. Even there was if you don't, nothing there was no here. Shrimp, there, was there was no shrimp. Like there was nothing here for an opening weekend of a new overlaid attraction, and the main focal point is cooking. This was pretty. I'm gonna say pathetic. I can agree with that. All right. To I'm grumpy thing. now. <laughs> He's grumpy now. We gotta we gotta cheer him up. What are we gonna do to cheer you up? Already passed six to six days, so whatever. <laughs> now, with that disappointment out of the way, we're making our way over to Storybook Circus to do something that I've been wanting to do. We haven't made our way out here, and that is check out the smell offense again. Now that they've officially opened, it's been a while. So this will be a proper review of that. Oh, oh. the creme brulee croissant oh. at Gaston's. You can salvage the day. I can salvage the day. You can. Maybe after the smell offense. Gaston never lets me down. Oh, let's do it. Now we will go back to Gaston's to get a croissant. We will. But first, the Storybook Circus smell offense situation. We need to pick up a map and then um, once we put all the stickers in the right place, we get a prize. Oh, they, they're doing a prize for it? It's a little prize. I think it's amazing because we truly have not been back here since it opened. Well, not even actually before it opened. Yeah. So like, I'm like months behind. And I don't know if I'm smelling Me Big too. Pop souvenirs or the phone. I'm going to say it's a souvenir shop. I don't it's know. Like, we'll see how it goes. All right, we've got our map and our first elephant. Oh. That does Ooh, smell good. you good. do smell it. You do smell it. Hmm. All right. Let's open this up. And place the appropriate sticker. Caramel apple. Right here. Okay, I'm on it. I'm sticker here. Make it happen, Russ. Look, I'm a little distracted right now, okay? By what? You got me all excited about Gaston. First elephant down. Just a reminder, make sure you're hydrating. Yes, make sure you're hydrating. It's really important. Toasty today. All right, let's make our way to the next elephant. Now, the cast member said that they go off in terms of smell. The smell goes off every 10 minutes and that we're at the end of the cycle right now. So do all of them smell at the same time? I feel like that might be the situation, but it's not a constant smell. So something to be aware of. I'm very impressed with how much it did smell, though. Yeah. Like, it actually smelled really I mean, really we good. could smell it when we, we walked smell past, it. so that was nice. But I wonder if we'll be able to smell the others, though. I feel like right now, I can't smell this one. No. Found the second one, so we're gonna put the sticker on now. It does smell really good, though. I was a little surprised, because in all honesty, I had my doubts that you wouldn't, you'd have to be like really right on top of the elephant to smell it. And you don't have to, you can be a few feet back. Obviously, wind direction does matter. But overall, you can still smell it. It's really cute. Next up, we have the hot dog, or the corn dog. Can't corn. smell this one, which is probably a good thing. Remember how we said to hydrate? Well, we just pulled off into the big top by Pete Silly Sideshow because they do have some bubblers in here and it's a nice shaded area. They have some fans, they're not doing much, but um, yeah, hydrate. Anyway, Russ told me he wanted to say something. Just another update, it's 1040 right now. Tiana's Bayou is on groups 22 to 24. It's a crawl, people. 
It's a crawl. And look, here's the thing. I say this, and the reason we're talking about this right now is because you have to be aware of this if you're going to be here for this holiday week or if you're one of the people who's going to be traveling following the holiday. I know a lot of you have been making that decision instead of coming during the holiday. Fourth of July is like right around the corner. So know that it is a slow crawl. It is not like it is for other attractions that move through the virtual queue a lot faster. All right, back to the smell of things. This is the churro. I will say, I wonder if the smell is really strong, which we can't smell this one, um, but I wonder if the smell is really strong and only going off every 10 minutes so that it can be really strong. You know what mm. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. As opposed to like the other like smelly things that they have around the parks where you have to be right up on it. I wonder if because it's far back, they're like, we'll just do it every 10 minutes. And we're really wafted out. Oh. oh. <laughs> I smell it. it. Smells like chocolate. Making our way to the next elephants now. I have to say, I'm a little disappointed that the splash pad isn't on. It's so hot out today. Come on, man. I'd jump in that splash pad. I'd like to pull off. Look, next elephant. The gumball was right down the way, and I don't know if you can see, but there are people sitting right in front of it. So it's one of those things that we talked about before. It's kind of hard to experience some of these because of their position, but yeah, whatever. Can you smell this one? Yeah, it's this one's light. This one's just pink lemonade, so it's a lot lighter. Pink lemonade? It's not pink. Yeah, it is. It's not a pink elephant. Pink lemonade. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Here's our last two elephants. Again, the, the two that I was most concerned about being able to check out, we're not gonna be able to go over there without being like in a crowd of people. Um, so we're just gonna sit here and put our stickers in the appropriate places. Let's be honest. The Big Top Souvenirs has the best smells. It does have the best smells. I'm, I'm looking forward to going in there once we turn this in. Oh yeah. Cause because we get a prize. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, we've done it. We have completed. And that means we are top nose with assistance. That's getting added to the resume. Absolutely. Done. All right, now that we have taken in all of some of the best smells at Walt Disney World located inside Big Top Souvenirs, I know some of you think it's Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't agree. Big Top Souvenirs is where it's at. We need to make our way over to the one and only, the one who never lets us down. He's got a swell cleft in his chin. He's got biceps to spare. Some would say he's the cream of the crop. He rises to the top. Let's go get that uh, croissant from Guest on Tavern. I think it's a tart too, who knows? Why not? <laughs> Look at him. Look at this fella. This gentleman. Ah, glorious. What'd you get, Russ? I got everything. I got the ham and Gruyere tart with the chips. So don't understand the chips, but that's okay. And then I got the, the vanilla creme brulee croissant, almost the same price as a gumbo. <laughs> It's a little tight in here, so I'm going to take a bite of both. Oh, and yeah. then we'll turn it over to Russ. So first we have this incredibly heavy croissant. It is like dense, this thing. And cold. So we'll see how this goes. I just realized I have no napkins or anything. Let me go get some real fast. Yeah, well, he's going to go get some napkins. I'm still going to take my bite and see how this goes. I probably should have waited. Got a lot of cream custard in there. So hard to see because it's dark in here. It's sticky and it's probably on my face right now, but I'm going in for another bite because I want some more of this custard in here. I don't know how to do this in a good way because it's square, you know? But. Wow. That's good. All right, next up we have this, which smells like heaven. It smells really good. I can hear that crunch from here, people. Let's do it! Oh my god. That's how you make food, right? Like, that's, that's nice food. This is how it's done. All right, I'm gonna start off with the tart as well. Let's see what happens. Wow, it is 
stacked. It's Holy heavy. cow. <laughs> oh my god, that is so good. Oh no. I'm losing the top. It is so messy though. But oh my god. You have to try this next thing though, because oh. I don't know why, but I wasn't expecting the tart to be cold. Well, not the tart, you mean the croissant. The croissant, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. Is that not like the best thing you've eaten in a long time? I know this sounds weird, but I feel like I'm having festival food right now. Oh, first. But I'm sure. getting proper portions of the festival food. Yes. It's so good. There's one man that will never let you down. That's yes, Gaston. That was really, really good. Like some of the best quick service I've had in what feels like forever. I know we haven't been doing a lot of eating out here on the channel, but simple and delicious. A creme brulee croissant, and it was stacked and it was messy and by god it was messy yes it's very messy i even have a little bit of a yeah you got a stain stain on my shirt worth every penny though yeah that's what it's about mm -hmm. the ham and gruyere that's your wheel i thought that was so good i mean it was both really good like both of them were really good but whoo that tart mm. i'm so happy to hear that and that's what's so great about like our different taste buds and stuff like that is like i'm a huge vanilla fan like ridiculous i know it's like oh vanilla's plain but like there's good vanilla and then there's great vanilla that was great vanilla yeah that was really good and the price wasn't bad definitely worth it um sink okay it's an extra two dollars compared to that gumbo that we had earlier and i'm sorry so much more worth it i gotta I got, I go back to it go to port orleans wait till food and wine fest there's better gumbo out there yeah do not get that stuff and like i said i haven't even got the beignets yet i don't even think i'm gonna I really don't. No. Chicken's already off the list. Yeah. I wanted to get it because that's originally what I wanted. And maybe we will later on, mm. but not today. Not today. I want to end on a high note. And that was definitely the highest of notes, at least in my opinion. Lifted up by biceps. I, I, it's great. What else is there to say? <laughs> Captain's log. You don't even like Star Trek. Captain's log. Okay. Could be Captain Hook for all we know. Just spent a significant amount of time wiping sugar off my lap. I don't know how I got so much sugar all over me. I mean, it was a messy meal. Like that um, creme brulee thing was really messy, but like I, I wiped up. I went to the bathroom, I wiped up there, walked all the way over here. Still a disaster, so. I will say it's a hot day, but man, is it beautiful in the shade though. It is so nice out. It is a beautiful day out in the shade. Yeah. Just gotta stay away from the sun. Yeah. That thing is nuking. Captain's log. <laughs> I can't even take it seriously. You don't like Star Trek, stop it. Anyways, before we head out <clears throat> to our next segment of this Picasso of a video, Tiana's Bayou Adventure update, virtual queue, not even boarding right now. It's 11.30. Let me down, girl. You let me down. All right. We made our way back to the front of the park, and that means it's time to head out. I hope you had fun today. We did a lot. I think that the food was definitely disappointing. I mean, we already talked about that, so I'm not going to go into it again. Hopefully, it improves over time, though. I would love to have seen it really, like, for opening day of the attraction, you know? Yeah, I think it's, it's disappointing because it is you know, opening weekend or, you know, you can call yeah. it whatever you want. You know, it's supposed to be celebrating the opening and take a first step forward in that direction. Not a good look. No, but you know what did kind of pleasantly surprise me, even though I'm still not like blown away, is the smell of fence. The smell of fence was actually really cute, really yeah. fun. Stayed true to the fact that we knew it was going to be a problem when people are just sitting there, which is totally fine. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it is what it is. But Gaston's Tavern still holding strong that one knocked it out of the park today i really enjoyed that and it was a great way to wrap things up here so i mean what more can you ask for yeah and i think i'm just gonna finalize this one last thing too though uh i do enjoy the merch and the critter co-op area mm -hmm. it's really cute it's very well done it's very well themed i look forward to going on the ride someday speaking of which 11 50 p.m a.m i'm tired it's a little hot still not boarding yeah 
still not boarding. And they didn't get past what, group 20, what did I say? 20 something. 20 something. So I don't know what's going on. It's rough. Yeah. It's gonna be rough riding Tiana's right now with the virtual queue and with all the technical problems. But again, we'll talk more about that later once we get the opportunity to ride. For now, I think it's time for us to head out. I hope you had fun. We sure did, even though there was a little bit of disappointment. And um, if you did, don't forget to tell us what your favorite part was. Well, I think the thing is, you make your own fun. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta make your fun. Disney can only do so much. In fact, one of you actually commented on that, saying that we had a good attitude, even though things did not go well for opening day of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. But that's just because you choose what to be upset about. And I choose to only be upset about things that are truly upsetting. Like the gumbo. <laughs> like the gumbo. But anyway, we're headed out. Thanks so much for hanging out with us, and we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.